everyone, and welcome to Del Monte on Science. I'm Lou Del Monte. Today we're going to talk about the relationship between time, existence, and energy. And we're going to kick off our discussion by talking a little bit about coordinates. Because when you think about it, time is a coordinate. So let's talk about coordinates. When we were in school and we were doing geometry, we really only considered three coordinates. And I'm going to draw a three-dimensional picture of that on a, on a two-dimensional board, so you'll have to use your imagination. But we typically talked about something like the x coordinate, which is usually horizontal, the z coordinate, which is usually vertical, and then going into space, the y coordinate. So you have to envision that as a three dimensional. And this was Euclidean geometry. And you probably remember back from your classes in geometry that in Euclidean geometry, if you had an isosceles triangle, which is a triangle with two equal sides, the angle here was equal to the angle here. So this angle was equal to this angle. They were the same. And so that's Euclidean geometry. So Euclidean geometry has three dimensions, x, y, and z. However, in order to express Einstein's theory geometrically, uh, four dimensions were, were needed. And the person who did that was Herman Minkowski. Now I'm going to put his name down so that you can look it up if you'd like. And he actually was born in 1864, and he died in 1909. Now, the thing about Herman Minkowski is that he had Einstein as a student. And when Einstein first came out with his special theory of relativity, and that was in 1905, so in 1905, Einstein comes out with the special theory of relativity. And I'm just abbreviating. Special theory of relativity comes out. And he does it algebraically. So we're all familiar, for example, with E equals mc squared. This is algebra. This says energy is equal to mass times the square of the acceleration. And this is shorthand. This means c times c. The speed of light in a vacuum times the speed of light in a vacuum. And they shorthand it by putting a 2 there. And that's algebra. But along came Herman Minkowski, and he, he restates Einstein's special theory of relativity using what's called Minkowski space. So let's talk about those coordinates. So it's, we're, we're going to be talking about Minkowski space. And he has the normal three coordinates, x, y, and z. Those are the normal coordinates. But he has a fourth coordinate. And that coordinate is i, c, t. And we'll discuss what this is. OK. First, i, i is equal to the square root of minus 1. Now that's called an imaginary number because although you can express it mathematically, you can't solve it. The square root of minus 1 is not solvable. So they call it an imaginary number, and that's where the i comes from. c is the speed of light in a vacuum. And t is actually time, the sequence of events, as measured with clock. So it's the sequence of events.
Now, Minkowski space is the typical way that the theory, the special theory of relativity is taught. And I actually learned it this way, or I'd say well over 40 years ago. However, there are other ways of teaching this and other ways of expressing the coordinates. I just want you to be aware of that. But this particular set of coordinates is extremely useful for, for understanding the relationship between time, existence, and energy. And so that's why I brought that out. And we'll come back to that. So let's start with a simple question, and that is, what is time? Now this is deceptively simple, because if somebody asks you what time it is, you look at your watch, and you say, well, it's such and such a time, and so on. However, defining time is actually very difficult. The true nature of time is elusive. And I just want to bring in, in this segment, that it was Einstein who actually uncovered, revealed, just how complex time is. He was the one who actually melded, put together what's called space-time that space and time were connected, and that they were inseparable. So uh, defining time is relatively difficult. Uh, scientists and philosophers have been asking the questions regarding time for what amounts to be the last 2,500 years. And here are just some of the questions. What causes time? Where does time, why does time appear to slow down by gravity and motion? Is time real, or is it just a, an emerging concept? In other words, we experience the present, and we remember the past, and we anticipate a future. So the past is not real, and the future is not real, just the present. Does time have a direction? Philosophers call that the arrow of time. You're born before you die. Is time a dimension? How do we measure time? And is time a measure of change, such as the sand flowing through an hourglass? And we're going to address those questions in the next post. This was a foundation. This post was a foundation so that we could get to actually addressing this question, what is time? and how does it relate to existence. Thank you.